Hey everyone, welcome to The Daily Word. I'm really glad that you've joined me. And for our Daily Word today, we're in the book of Exodus, chapter 16. And what I'd like to do is share verses 3 to 8 with you. And then let's, let's talk today about complaining versus concern. So if you would, uh, hear the word of the Lord. If only the Lord had killed us back in Egypt, they moaned. There we sat around pots filled with meat and ate all the bread we wanted. But now you have brought us into this wilderness to starve us all to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, Look, I'm going to rain down food from heaven for you. Each day the people can go out and pick up as much food as they need for that day. I will test them in this to see whether or not they will follow my instructions. On the sixth day, they will gather food, and when they prepare it, there will be twice as much as usual. So Moses and Aaron said to all the people of Israel, By evening you will realize that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. In the morning you will see the glory of the Lord, because He has heard your complaints, which are against Him, not against us. What have we done that you should complain about us? Then Moses added, The Lord will give you meat to eat in the evening and bread to satisfy you in the morning, for He has heard all your complaints against Him. What have we done? Yes, your complaints are against the Lord, not against us. Well, uh, friends, I, uh, I can't definitively say whether or not there is more complaining in churches or in other other venues other gatherings of people let's say uh, in clubs or in entertainment venues or in medical facilities let's say um, I can't say definitively where there might be more complaining but I I can say that after about five years of part-time ministry and 25 years of full-time pastoral ministry, um, I I can say definitively that there is complaining in the church. Now, I can say also that there are some churches that are filled with a a sort of complaining spirit. And thank, thank God, I mean, honestly, thank you, Lord, that our church is certainly not one of those, not like that. I can also say that uh, there is a a great temptation to complain in the church. Uh, I I would say a greater temptation than in other other associations, other venues, uh, because the church is explicitly not about pleasing its members. Uh, The church is about serving Christ. It is about the mission of Christ. When we join the church family, we commit to following Jesus together. Whereas in many other places, like clubs and restaurants and entertainment venues and so forth, these are explicitly about pleasing people. Like that's what every effort essentially is about, is about pleasing people. So it seems to me that there is, in fact, a greater temptation. When you add to that the, the spiritual battle that, that followers of Jesus are in, we, we recognize what Paul calls the schemes of the devil. But I can also say, friends, that there is a great bulwark against complaining, a complaining spirit in the church, and that is that it is all about Jesus. It is about focusing on Him on God, on His goodness. It is about praising and serving God who is good. And in the church, we experience the love and the power and the joy of the Lord together. He gives us love for one another by the power of His Holy Spirit. And so my guess is, my guess is that there is overall less complaining in the church, even though there is a greater temptation to it, there is less in the church because of this great bulwark that it is all about Jesus. My friends, we also know that the stakes are higher in the church in regard to complaining 
to a complaining spirit, and, and that is that we could actually find ourselves complaining against God, that God has led, that God has spoken, that God has done, that God has dec- decreed, and we, are, we find ourselves complaining against God. Moses points this out, and you can tell that, that he's stung a bit by their complaining. He says, you're not complaining. What, what do you have to complain against us about? The people actually say, you know, it would have been better if we just stayed in Egypt. It would have been better even if we had just died there. We had so much to eat. It was so fantastic in Egypt. And honestly, this, it doesn't even make sense, the complaining. It doesn't make sense. It is as, the, as if God had not liberated them from terrible oppression, from uh, cruel slavery. It was as if they hadn't cried out to God under this cruel slavery for God to, to liberate them, to save them, to act on their behalf. And, and in fact... They had cried out for freedom, and God did free them. And so so Moses says, listen, this is a work of God. And so when you're complaining about how God is leading and what God is doing, you need to know you're not complaining against, against myself or my brother Aaron. You are complaining against God. So yes, the stakes in the church are much higher than other places because we could find ourselves in the position of complaining against God. And, and I think you know, here it's, it's helpful to, to make a distinction, and this is how we began, a distinction between complaint and concern. And if, if we could just make a distinction here, I would say that, that the one that is complaint or a complaining spirit is about the violation of my preferences that there's some way that i'm being inconvenienced there's there's something that that i just don't like it being done this way or that way or i'm being asked to sacrifice to give up something uh, for christ and for his mission uh, or i'm being i'm being tested i'm being asked to take a a great step of faith and so there is a complaining spirit we see where it is about our preferences it's about our being inconvenienced it's about our being asked to sacrifice or to trust in Christ but on the other hand a concern uh, really is about the mission the accomplishment of the mission that Christ has given us that that there is some there's some concern we have uh, about something that may be hindering us from accomplishing the, the, the mission of Christ. There may be some concern about our adherence to the truth of the Scriptures, of the Word of God, that, that there's something that's taught, there's, there's something that's said that's, that's uh, amiss, that, that is contrary to Scripture, and there's a concern that needs to be shared. And, and there is this in the complaining spirit on the one hand there is this insistence that my will be done right my will be done Um, i want whatever it is that i don't like to stop and i want it to be done the way that i would like it to be done right but on the other hand a concern a concerned spirit is not about my will be done but thy will be done may the will of god be done and I want to see that happen, and I want to see that happen so much that I am actually willing to help make it happen. Uh, There's a brother in Christ that I'm very fond of, and and a couple of times over the last few months, he's he's shared concerns with me, and and he's he's very apologetic about it because he certainly doesn't want to be hurtful he he doesn't want to discourage at all and so he's very apologetic and one of the things that I love about this brother is that when he shares a concern like hey um, this this isn't uh, posting or this uh, there's a there's a concern here he's always willing to um, to help right he's he's always willing to be a part of the solution and that too 
uh, is, is a part of how we can really see that distinction is I see a concern and I want to help because I want to help us achieve the mission of Christ. And so, friends, let's, let's strive before the Lord to, to not have a complaining spirit that's about our preferences and our convenience and our comfort, but let's have a concerned spirit that together we would fulfill the will of God, that together we would, we would live out the mission and the ministry that God uh, has given us. And I'll just close by saying again, thank God we certainly do not have a church that is characterized by a complaining spirit. Praise God, He has given us a great love one for another, and it is to His glory. Amen. Amen. And friends, until we have a chance to speak again, I pray that God would bless you and that He would keep you.